before this role, one of my previous hats was head of carbon budgets and climate change at what was then DEC. And the, so I was responsible for things like setting the fourth carbon budget, uh, doing a lot of the work on how we implemented the Climate Change Act. And it's absolutely right, it is a facilitative piece of legislation. What it does, and actually what we try to do increasingly with the policy framework across Bayes, is to set that long-term direction, provide certainty and confidence, but without saying we're going to do it in exactly this way and avoid stifling innovation. So I think the Climate Change Act remains a really, really good guide for us, and it is where an awful lot of our policy flows from. But back to what I was originally going to talk about. So... Um, my role really is to offer the context from a government perspective, so you can then get into the rather more interesting and expert discussions on the substance. Normally, when I do this, I will sort of give the sort of very, very broad brush perspective, start wide and then narrow into the detail. Um, I thought I might do exactly the opposite today and just start from one building, which is our office at 1 Victoria Street. So in the spirit of practicing what we preach, we've been looking to do some work on uh, decarbonising our own estate, because actually it's, it's not in the best state it could possibly be. It is a leaky old building, and we thought we should do something with it. As part of Green Great Britain Week, we made a pledge to reduce emissions from Bay's estate by 66%. It's up on ED's pledge rule, in fact. Um, there's another reason for it, as well as the sort of leading by example one. We really wanted to learn from this, so the experience of actually trying to decarbonise and improve the efficiency of our own buildings is a great way to understand some of the practical challenges that others face when trying to do the same. And it has been an education, I've got to have to say. So we have an excellent and very committed estates team in the building, but what's become very clear from doing this is they aren't energy experts. Uh, they have had to really get themselves up to speed to find the right expertise, to find knowledge, to learn how to do something they just didn't know how to do. Um, they've also perfectly understood we've got a whole host of competing priorities. It might be a, a leaky building from an energy point of view. It's also just a very old building. It needs a lot of TLC, and there is there are competing priorities for budget, for time, and for resource within a small estates team. There's procurement. Uh, we're part of the public sector, which never helps with this sort of thing, but it is far from straightforward, actually, to understand the right and most efficient procurement routes for this stuff, uh, to find out how to just get audits done, to get work done on the building. We've learned a lot from going through this process. But it's, the list goes on, and I'll stop there, but the point is it's, this is within an organisation that has energy efficiency and energy management as a core part of its purpose, that has huge levels of buy-in at board level, at chief executive level, our permanent secretary, and where uh, members of the board are telling us to get on and do it, which not everybody has, and it's still incredibly challenging. So I'll go back to the big picture and the usual government message, but I sort of wanted to start from that sense of there are reasons why this is difficult, and we get that there are huge practical challenges apart from the policy ones. So back to the wider picture. Um, coming back to that sort of Climate Change Act, the greenhouse gas uh, overall view, between them, businesses, homes, and the public sector in the UK are close to 40% of greenhouse gas emissions. So it's a huge, huge part of the picture, and we're going to have to focus there. Within that, the biggest single source of emissions and of energy demand is buildings. Um, realistically, Every single macroeconomic model we've ever done shows that emissions from buildings are going to have to get to pretty close to zero by 2050 if we need to meet those long-term targets that are set out and enshrined in the Climate Change Act. So we are going to have to get that done. That is, in practice, a mix of energy efficiency and moving to low-carbon heat. There's power as well, but that'll be done elsewhere, and Steve's already set out some of the impressive figures on the progress that's been made there. Um, we can and should make progress in decarbonising heat. So, for instance, there are some obvious things we can do quickly, focus on off-gas grid solutions where it's more obvious what to do, uh, undertaking work to test and develop long-term technology solutions. But the reality is that heat decarbonisation is extremely complex, and for most of the building stock that's on the gas grid, and actually for a lot of industrial processes, the pathway and the technology mix is a lot less clear. In that context, it really makes sense from our point of view to put a huge amount of effort now at a scale into energy efficiency. And with that in mind, we set out some fairly ambitious, but again, not precise and specific goals in the clean growth strategy last year. So for homes, we said we'd get as many homes as possible to EPC band C by 2035, um, and by 2030 for fuel poor homes. For context, uh, for the average home compared to today, that would deliver a reduction in bill costs around £270 a year, so it's material. Uh, for the public sector, we've, we're aiming to halve emissions by 2032 relative to today. Not easy, but it just makes sense. It delivers direct savings to the public purse, and we spend around the order of £3 billion a year on energy efficiency in the public sector, so savings there have got to make sense. And for business, which is where I'll focus for the rest of this talk, um, we said we'd improve energy productivity by 20% by 2030. 
It's a tall order, uh, but we've actually doubled down on that since the clean growth strategy. So back in May, uh, the Prime Minister announced the first set of missions under the industrial strategy, and the first one for clean growth was focused on buildings. It was a commitment to look to halve the energy use of new buildings by 2030 compared to new builds today, and at the same time to halve the cost of retrofitting existing buildings to the same standard. Now, arguably, the second half of that is harder than the first, but they are both challenging things. And I think what it shows is a commitment and a focus on buildings as one of the absolutely key bits of energy. Um, so there's some difficult stuff in there. The question is how we do it. Um, on the business energy side, we don't have a bad story to tell overall, and over the last 20 years or so, we've seen a steady decline in energy use in buildings uh, in absolute terms. Now, some of that just reflects changes in the wider economy and the shift to uh, an increase in services, but the majority of it is actually driven by energy efficiency in high energy using sectors. Um, in the commercial sector, we've seen energy use overall remain relatively flat in recent years, but that still reflects the sort of feet paddling away under the water, and that the that sort of energy efficiency in the face of growth, both in the size of the sector and in terms of its footprint in terms of buildings. Now, reality within that, it is a very, very diverse sector. There are many types of buildings. There are many uses and patterns of energy within that. There's a whole array of processes, uh, different demands, different patterns, different temperatures required. Um, but there is a good story of energy efficiency overall. Uh, within that picture, vast majority of businesses, as you'll know, are SMEs. But while they're over half of energy demand from that sector, actually larger businesses use a much a proportionately higher amount of energy. So despite 95% of businesses being SMEs, an awful lot of the energy is elsewhere. Um, within all of that, as I've said generally, buildings are the highest source of demand. Heating, cooling, and hot water are the biggest overall factor there. So all of that helps uh, to guide us from a government point of view on where we focus the policy, where we focus priorities and effort in meeting that 20% goal. Uh, but it doesn't get us all of the way there. And, uh, as you expect, and with all energy efficiency, there are win-wins in this. There are a lot of benefits. So if we achieve the 20%, that potentially saves up to £6 billion a year in energy costs to businesses. Uh, it drives up to £23 billion or so of investment in energy efficiency, supports productivity, it supports activity right across the country, so a huge industrial strategy win from our point of view. And, coming back to the Climate Change Act, up to 22 megatons of carbon savings during the fifth carbon budget. So there's an awful lot to win there, and it's a big prize. Uh, but it's difficult. And I wanted to reflect on a few of the challenges. So a lot of these apply to other sectors as well, but from a business energy point of view, some of them are unique. Um, first of all, and this applies elsewhere, split incentives. So a lot of the sector, as you all know, is rented, and there are split incentives between landlords and tenants. So this applies in homes as well, but actually a higher proportion of the commercial sector is, is rented out. Energy is simply a non-core activity. I'm sure many of you uh, know this to your pain. So, investment in energy efficiency can get squeezed out by other priorities, even when it pays back. And that can be a perfectly rational decision for businesses. Uh, for the same reason, even where energy efficiency is cost-effective, it pays back quickly, the returns don't always compare well compared to core business investments. They're just also not always as salient at board level as things that are obviously core. Um, a lot of businesses, as we found, uh, don't have the expertise or the time to look at what energy efficiency measures might be suitable. And Maybe just the most obvious thing to say of all is business energy use is enormously varied in the building types and how energy is used. And that means from a policy point of view, we just simply aren't going to find one-size-fits-all solutions. I think that also gives the emphasis to what Steve said about the need for not being overly prescriptive in how we design the policies. So we're obviously not starting from zero here. We've got a range of existing policy mechanisms in place. Um, it's a pretty familiar list. I won't dwell on it, but we've got a suite of levers that includes building regulations, product standards, uh, the shortly to be closed CRC energy, efficiency, um, CRC energy efficiency scheme, we've got climate change agreements, and we've got the energy savings opportunities scheme. Uh, more recently, we opened our £18 million industrial heat recovery scheme to applications just earlier this month, and we're in the process of implementing the new streamlined energy and carbon reporting framework. So all of that helps. Uh, but if you add up the impact of all of those things, it will not get us to that 20% ambition. We are going to need to do more. So alongside and following the clean growth strategy, we launched a call for evidence on business energy efficiency. That closed on the 26th of September. We got a pretty good response rate. Um, we haven't published our response there yet, so I won't preempt what will be in there. But what I might do, just by way of a starter for 10 for your discussions later, is mention some of the ideas we explored in that. Um, 
various of which we may or may not end up pursuing depending on what we get out, and there will be other things that come out of the responses and indeed from groups like this. So some of those were building on the um, existing uh, private rental sector regulations that set minimum energy efficiency standards. Those came into effect in April. And think about, do we tighten those over time? Do we build a trajectory for those looking ahead to the future? Um, improving energy efficiency requirements for new and existing buildings through building regulations. Again, trying to do that in a technology neutral way, but setting a clear, predictable path into the future. Uh, looking at what we can do in the public sector with our own buying standards and efforts to demonstrate leadership on energy efficiency and also just drive scale in some cases. Looking at the role of voluntary standards in improving building performance, um, making the best possible use of digital tools and data. I think I was at an event earlier in the week where someone said buildings are as much software as hardware these days. Digital is increasingly uh, where the future is here. So we are looking at what we could do there and to support that. Um, Reviewing how we use the energy technology less, particularly uh, relevant this week, given it's not now got enhanced capital allowances behind it, or won't soon. Um, facilitating the market for energy services. So thinking at how we grow that, how we support aggregation of smaller projects alongside it, uh, and in particular supporting the role of green finance and bespoke energy efficiency projects. Um, and of course, the other thing to mention is we, in budgets on Monday, we announced the creation of a new £315 million industrial energy transformation fund. There'll be more detail on exactly how that'll work in due course. We also announced a budget that will be coming forward proposals on a separate scheme uh, focused on SME energy efficiency. So watch this space on those. Now, ultimately, uh, we're going to need to get the right set of policy instruments, right? We really want to drive and support a market rather than trying to do everything through government activity and subsidy. And I'm sure an awful lot of people have their own uh, views on how best we do this in this room. I'm hoping a lot of that will come out of conversations today. Thank you very much.